have kids to heal old wounds, but uh, sometimes unexpectedly mothering our kids fiercely and teaching them to be powerful leads us to a long-awaited triumph. When I was 12, my mother remarried. She had been parenting alone since my father left when I was seven, and she did not like being single. My father remarried the year before and was determined to do the same. She was married within three months of meeting my stepfather. The summer they were married, we took a trip to the Hudson Valley, where Daddy Bill grew up, about a four-hour drive from our home in Syracuse, New York. It was supposed to be a magical vacation, a honeymoon for the new family. The second day we were there, my new stepfather took me to a deserted farm in the blistering heat. Holding me by the wrist, my arm twisted behind my back, he raped me, face down on the hot plastic seat of the car. When we returned, my mother took one look at me and she knew. Instead of helping me, she had what I now know was a psychotic break. And she said we had to leave immediately. I was not allowed the time to shower. Instead of heading home, my stepfather took us entirely in the wrong direction. We went hours out of our way and we headed through the Lincoln Tunnel into New York City. In Manhattan, and that was the Manhattan of the 1970s, with uh, drug dealers on the streets and storefront peep shows, my mother got out of the car and she ran screaming down the street. Her wearing no shoes, her hair is sticking out in every direction. Of course, I ran after her. Eventually, she ran into a stairwell, and uh, I stood in the laughing, jeering crowd, the daughter of the psychotic woman that didn't want to talk to her, my own bare feet. A beautiful young woman in her red hair sat with my mother, speaking softly. She held my mother's hand, and she was able to get her back to the car and under a blanket in the back seat with my little sister. I sat up front with my stepfather, reading maps and changing radio stations, sticky hot and terrified. I began hallucinating near dawn from exhaustion. The four-hour trip took 11 hours. I didn't let it destroy me. In my 20s, I helped develop a training for new rape crisis peer program on my college campus, and I, program a, ugh, I began a career in the domestic and sexual violence movement. I joined a support group, went to counseling at a rape crisis center, and I spoke at Take Back the Night rallies. And I became active in changing the laws for survivors of childhood, act, childhood sexual abuse so they could sue their abusers. I healed, but one thing stayed with me. My body held tight to the trigger of his hand on my wrist. Recently, I returned to therapy, and I began again the journey to heal, to remove that imprint from my body. For the 4th of July, I got a new tattoo on my wrist of a triskel, a symbol of female power to reclaim my wrist as my own. Can anybody see it? I don't think I can see it. This summer, my kids and I took a trip to New York. We went there to visit my mother, who now is in the late stages of dementia, and she's living in a nursing home in upstate. I'm the sole mom of this beautiful 14-year-old boy and a 13-year-old girl, and they're really, really amazing kids. They're athletes, athletic, secure in who they are. They're pretty amazing. Both of my kids asked me for something special for themselves. They knew we were going to New York. My daughter wanted to go to the Hudson Valley and visit a good friend of mine who has goats and chickens on a farm there. My son, he'd been asking me to go to New York City since he was a preschooler. When his favorite show was Simon and Garfunkel in Central Park, you know that concert, I don't know if anybody's seen it. He'd been, my ex had been promising that trip since as long as he could remember, but it never happened. Of all the things my kids could have asked for, visiting these two places was my greatest fear. I'd spent close to 40 years avoiding exactly this trip. I needed to decide if I was strong enough to take the trip. So I decided yes. 
After visiting my mother, we headed to the Hudson Valley to my friend's beautiful farm, a picturesque cottage on the river where you could see the sunset, and of course there were goats and chickens. Each day my daughter rose early and spread hay to feed the animals and collect eggs. My son, who's a city person, he even got up and did a chore or two. I relaxed and I breathed deeply, enjoying swims in the river, picking peaches, taking long walks with my friend. I was doing this trips on my terms this time. I was doing it for my children, but I was also doing it for myself. The day after we arrived, my kids and I did a ropes course in the nearby mountains. With my children leading the way, we encouraged each other to meet the next seemingly impossible challenge, and we celebrated each victory. They showed both leadership and empathy as they turned around and they checked each time on me to see if I could keep up. Of course, I was keeping up. We walked tight ropes, 30 feet in the air. We traversed wooden planks hanging from ropes that swung when you stepped on them, and we climbed shaky ladders. As I zip-lined down the ski slope, side by side with my daughter, following my son in the lead, I felt like together my kids and I could do anything. We were elated and exhausted, and we were completely taken with the bravery of each other. Next day, New York City. My son wanted to see Times Square, Ground Zero, the Statue of Liberty, and he really wanted to go to this cool store that all his friends would be jealous of. With my friend as our tour guide, we took a day trip on the train and we hit the sights. I was a happy tourist, doing really well right up until that time that it became time to go to Ground Zero. And then suddenly, I panicked. I was afraid of opening myself up to all that pain. The pain of the losses experienced on that site, I was afraid we're gonna open up this groundswell of my own pain that I couldn't contain. I didn't want to feel the memories of my wrist or remember the pain of running in the streets of New York City, the shame that I felt. I didn't want my children to see me fall apart like I saw my own mother fall apart. My son, who was by my side, he looked me in the eyes, he said, Mom, it's okay, we don't have to do this. <laughs> what I thought with that moment was, this is the boy I am raising. I have taught him to be compassionate. And so suddenly I was anxious, but I wasn't panicked anymore. I was ready. Our friend told us about someone she knew that had died on 9-11, and she could never find that name on the, on the monument. We walked right up to that name. I shed tears for all the people that had died that day, but I didn't have one piece of the memories about my own pain. My stepfather no longer controls me. No longer does his hand grasp my wrist. No longer does the fear he gave me decide where I go or what I do. I am not that hurt little girl anymore. She is part of me. But this is my story, and now I have written a new chapter to that story. And I have given my children a completely new story. By knowing that I was hurt, in an age-appropriate way, of course, and that I was willing to face that fear that I carried for close to 40 years, my children have learned that it's okay to be afraid and that courage is facing your fear. Fear does not destroy us. By seeing my success, my complete joy of being in control of my own body and my own choices, my children learn that they can face their own fears. They can overcome whatever life gives them. They saw me take these steps for them, but they saw me take them for myself as well. Together, as a family, we triumph.